So, hi, here's me, looking like my best. I'm here to give a service. Today, I want to make a video on how you can get good at makeup when you're bad at makeup. I'm not a beauty guru, I'm not a makeup artist, I'm just your average girl just trying to get that Instagram face with like hacks. This is the basic of the basic. I am not a beauty guru. I am such a fan of watching beauty gurus and makeup tutorials, but sometimes I see them and they got like these nice brushes and they've got like all of the best stuff and they're just like, yeah, just do this and this and you, and you look at it and you're just like, oh my god. Like, it's just, it's just flawless. Some of us girls out there, we need like that little help, the initial starting point. I'm gonna try and not take it too seriously in this video, but also try and be somewhat informative. Uh, let's get on with the video. I'm super excited. I hope you are. I hope you're ready for the fact that this video is going to be an absolute mess. The first thing we want to start with is primer. I don't usually wear primer every day, but today I kind of like, wow, I'm gonna do a lot to my face, I want it to last. Basically what primer does is it fills all the holes in your face, also known as pores. I literally buy anything that says a mattifying, so this is a Soap and Glory one, this is a sleek makeup. And you wanna basically just rub it into your face, just like, go to town. You deserve a good clump of primer on your face, cause you know what? You're Fierce. Something I really don't know much about is foundation. For me, the biggest thing is I want something that I can just chuck on my face, will look fine, that doesn't feel heavy, actually suits my skin color because it doesn't matter what I wear, everything looks orange on me because I have what I believe is a green undertone. I don't have olive skin, I'm not tanned, I'm pale. I don't tend to wear foundation in the summer just because I don't need to and I just like not wearing foundation when I can. Some people like to use a beauty blender. If I'm feeling special, I might do that too. Oh my god. I'm just trying to really like avoid my eyebrows. Does anyone have like a foolproof way of not getting foundation in your eyebrows? That's a hack I need. Next up, we're gonna go to brows. My number one recommendation, which I don't think anyone is gonna take on board. Please, for the love of God, just get your eyebrows shaped by someone that knows what they're doing because it will make the world of difference. I used to get my eyebrows shaped um, before I got them micro pigmented, which is kind of like microblading. It's like an eyebrow tattoo, except for it's like dotted in, so it's like more of a shade rather than like the hairs are drawn in. I did that because I wanted it to be more natural, and they're kind of fading a little bit now because this was like a year ago. I overplugged my eyebrows when I was younger, so when they grew back, as in like this part of my eyebrow grew back, because I used to pluck them back like here, I decided to get them thin so they would look less patchy. And sometimes that can be a better thing because it means that the there's less to kind of fill in every day. I'm using the Isla Brow Pencil number 30 in Blonde. The reason why I like this is one, it's available at Boots. I prefer pencils because I feel like they give you a more natural feel. You know, a lot of people love these Instagram brows. I totally get it, but I kind of just like, I like seeing my natural hairs. I really struggle to find eyebrow pencils that are cool toned, um, so they look quite I don't know, gingery? This one isn't too bad, which is why I've always kind of stuck with it. It just really helps fill in some of those gaps. My favorite thing that I actually use on my brows though is <clears throat> the 24 hour brow setter from Benefit. It literally sets your eyebrows into place, makes them look really fluffy, and also it's clear. I hate tinted brow gels because they just get everywhere. Anyway, I just literally brushed this through. And what's great about this brow setter is I've had it since Christmas in the mini tub and it's still going. I don't know how long it's gonna go for, but it feels like it's gonna last forever, you know? And look, my eyebrows just look so much thicker and just so in place. So next up we're gonna go in with eyeshadow. So my number one tip for eyeshadow is sellotape. You wanna get a small piece and you wanna put it between the corner of your eye and the end of your brow. If your brows are shaped, they should hopefully be the exact same length. I think you have to work your way up. If you are literally like a massive noob, you wanna go from light to dark. Inner corner is light, middle of lid is mid, and the end is dark. I think it's always best to start off with kind of neutral kind of browns and golds. And then if you want to go a bit extremer, you can kind of go into like, I guess, more pinky colors. Once you got the hang of that, just go nuts. Today I'm going to kind of do a mid and go for more of like 
pinky colors. I'm actually gonna use the Revolution palette because this is from Boots and it is a really good palette. I really like it. I'm actually so surprised at how pigmented it is. I bought these brushes off of eBay. Like, they are not good. <laughs> but you know, we're keeping it real on this channel. So I'm gonna start off with this color here, which is kind of a light looking pinky color. And we're gonna start off by sticking this in the inner corners. And then you just wanna make sure that's evenly coated. And then I'm gonna go in with this pink color. Looks like a super dusty pink. So I'm just gonna put this right here. Another tip I would always use is that try to stay below your eye crease. My eye crease is here. If not, I know I'm gonna end up up here and that's not gonna be a good look. Next, I'm gonna use uh, this color here along that whole lid up to the sellotape because we can always go over with, with the darker color. This is where your sellotape comes in so nicely because you know that you're never ever gonna go over the edges and that's what I love about it, you know? Yay! Oh, we're looking so pretty already. Finally, we're gonna go in with a dark pink. Going for kind of a pinky looking brown is probably better than going for this. But you know what, because I'm feeling brave, I'm gonna go for this color here. And you literally wanna stick it right on the tape, right on the corner. Because if it's dark, you don't want it taking over your entire look. So literally just kind of like run it over that sellotape. I'm having such a fun time right now. This is what makeup should be. It should be fun. It shouldn't be daunting. You don't want to take a clean brush. You just want to run it over that crease that we said before to just kind of blend it all in. But you don't want to run over the actual eyelid. You just want to go above it. Next up, we're going to go with eyeliner. Now, I have so many people go like, your eyeliner is whack. And I have so many people go, your eyeliner is great. So here's the thing, I'm gonna keep doing what I enjoy. <laughs> I usually use a matte liquid liner, but if you're a beginner, I would say use more of like a pen liner and it'll look like this. This one from NYX is called Epic Ink Liner and I like this because it doesn't dry out and a lot of these I know tend to dry out. Is you just wanna take your tape, the corner of your eye and just draw a line like so. Just teeny teeny. I'm gonna connect the lash line with the flick and you just wanna slowly build this up. I'm just kind of drawing a little bit of a line on the lash line. Putting it at a little bit of an angle up to the flick. Just keep referring back to the other eye. Make sure they're even. Then you just want to take your tape and pull the tape away. I like to just extend those flicks a little bit more. Um, it depends how brave you're feeling, but I'm actually pretty happy with how these looks regardless. So next up, I'm gonna go in with concealer. Again, this is a very personal thing, but this is something that works for me. I like to go for a lighter concealer. This is the NYX Studio Photogenic HD Studio Concealer Corrector. I said that all wrong. Anyway, it's the NYX. It's in porcelain, which is the lightest. I learned this from Kim <laughs> Kardashian. We're gonna go under the eyes in triangles. We're gonna go up the nose, the forehead, round the nose, above the lip, and on the chin. And at this point, I do actually blend it out with a beauty blender because I don't want it to get stuck in the wrong places. Beauty blenders are supposed to be dabbed, not smeared. <laughs> You're literally like, might as well use your hands at that point. <laughs> Me personally, I have combination skin. I kind of like having that kind of natural glow from the foundation. What's great is that our foundation is actually very matte, very drying. But I do like to set the concealer, so I'm gonna use a little brush and I'm gonna use the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. And I just like to tap that under my eyes and around my nose. Next up, we're gonna go in with the contour. So I like to use kind of an angled brush for this. I'm gonna be using the Shade and Light palette, which is just destroyed, so I'm not gonna show you it. I like to go for a cooler tone bronzer just because this is a lot of orange in it. You can build it up slowly. I find it really hard to find bronzers because I'm really pale. <laughs> Everything just looks really dark on me. And you're just gonna go from the top of your ear down to kind of about here. And also if you do the duck face, you can see where it needs to go. This just builds up really nicely. Anyway, we're gonna, again, take it up to the sides of the face. Subtly. I also like to go under my chin just because I like having a defined jawline. So again, just take it from your ear underneath. Lots of sweet things. If you want your contour to look a lot more sharp, I guess. Hi, Gary. I would use a brush that looks like this. It's super pointy. And um, yeah, I just really like it. Then I use a light pigmented powder and we just kind of cut out that contour. You see, it just adds that little extra bit. Okay, so blush. I like to just go in one dab, especially with this Benefit blush, it's so pigmented. And then you just want to start 
not here, but more like here. Don't press down too hard. And then you get this really subtle, I think I got it. Then we're gonna go into highlighter. Now you can use two highlighters, you can use one. Sometimes I use two if I'm feeling extra. This is the Tartus Pro Go palette. I like to go here, right above my cheekbones. Down my nose, particularly focusing on the tip of my nose. Above your lip, on your chin a little bit. Above the brow bone. This is like a really pointy brush. I like to use this in the corner of my eyes to make them pop. Literally just go here. And then sometimes I bring it underneath the waterline a little bit as well. Now at this point, um, you can decide whether you want eyeshadow on the bottom. So I'm going to use the colour that we used around the middle area on the bottom, which is this colour here. Just because I really like that colour and I really want to bring it out a little bit more. And you just want to go towards the kind of back and then you can bring the highlighter in and it all kind of connects together. Wow! Well, next we want to go for mascara and your lashes. My lashes naturally face the floor. Like they are so dead straight and it really annoys me. So I often get a lash perm. Some people get their nails done. I get my lashes done. I don't know. It's like directly on my face. I can't be asked to do with nails. I also recently started using a lash serum, which I actually think is working. It's called I Glow Long Lashes Serum. They actually sent this to me. This was a gift. I actually feel like my lashes are thicker and longer. So I'll keep you updated on that though because I haven't been using it for the kind of time that it says to but I do think it works. I also would get some clear mascara ones just because they're really good for excess especially when you just get a new mascara and it's like there's a lot of product inside. You know that sweet spot is like before it goes really dry, but after it's new. So a clear mascara one is really good for just like sorting out that excess. I got a new mascara recently that I'm really liking, which is Bad Girl Bang Bang from Benefit. Like I said, there's a lot of products in it because I only just got it. So I often <laughs> try and brush off a little bit of that excess. I like to use it kind of across both lashes at the same time, just because I have a lot of product and you don't want like all of the product to just go on like a couple of lashes anyway yeah so you want to take that clean mascara one i'm gonna have to sort out my eyeshadow after this and just go through again just because i think the first time round they're more likely to clump i think this just makes such a difference and after i feel like i've done that i feel like i'm more likely to be able to go in for that kind of second coat because they're kind of all brushed out with the mascara already on. I feel like they're less likely to clump now. Boom! Okay, <laughs> this is the Paradise Kajel Ecstatic White Eyeliner. It's more like a crayon. I just like to put this on my bottle waterline because I think it just makes my eyes pop. Gives it a really like nice 60s feel. Even just like in the inner corners, this would be really nice if you don't want to put it on the whole bottom line. Again, I'm gonna go in with the Bad Girl Bang Bang Mascara. So here's the thing, we've used pink, so if we really wanted to go really cute kind of baby doll, we could use a pink on the lips, or if you want to make it really nighttime, we can use a red. Budget, let's go with a red. One thing to definitely Google online is lipsticks that suit everybody. This is Mary Jo Kay from Kylie Cosmetics. It's the only red that I found that I really mess with that just looks nice on my face and looks nice on everybody I know. I haven't met somebody this doesn't look good on. And you just want to draw the outline of your lips and then you want to go in again with that liquid eyeliner. So this is going to be great later on for touching up throughout the day. You don't really want to put this on more than once. And just use a little bit of product and build it up. Okay, get a, a card. It's so weird. See, I don't like it when it first goes on and then it dries matte. And it's literally the best. I got lipstick on my teeth. Now, one thing I would say about deciding between, usually for me, a red and a pink would be, what is your eyeshadow doing? I think the red goes better with more subtle colours. But if you're going to go for something that's like really out there, like, I don't know, like a blue or a green or a yellow or whatever, I think it's always good to look at your face weight and go like, mm, maybe I should go with a pink. This pink is Coco K and it's quite light. Not everyone would be into this. But one that I know that really does suit a lot of people, this colour here, which is Velvet Teddy from MAC. And if you like your lipsticks quite matte, another thing you can do, because this isn't that matte lipstick, is uh, basically put it on your lips and then take a piece of tissue and just with this you don't need to do that because it dries really nicely and there we go so to finish off we're gonna do some lashes i know a lot of people really struggle with lashes but i'm just gonna help you out big time so these are from isla i'm so glad isla stepped up their game um and they're corner lashes so they're slightly smaller which means you don't put them from here to here it's kind of more just like 
that outer corner area. They're a lot subtler and I think they're easier to put on. So I feel like what I do with my lashes aren't really that revolutionary, but at the same time, I'm just like, I meet people and they're like, I can't put on lashes. And I'm like, it's literally fine. The first thing you wanna do is cut off these ends because they're gonna irritate your eyes. I have quite big eyes, so usually I don't have to cut them down. This is Duo Eyelash Glue. You wanna add a very thin layer. It says 20 to 30 seconds. Literally just keep an eye on them. They need to be tacky. Like, don't just do it as the time because if they're still wet, they're not going to stick. Is it done yet? If you wanna know, give it a little tap. Here's what you're gonna do. It's the outer corner, so you know that the end of this is your outer corner. You just wanna place it on top. It's sticky, so it will tack really quickly. Just give them a little squeeze. And then sometimes, if you're feeling brave, maybe stick a little bit of your mascara on the end of your lashes. Just so they blend in that little extra. This is the finishing look. Another great thing, which I'm running out of, is Kat Von D's Locket. If you want it to set all day, this really helps. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I am ready for the comments that go, she looked better before. Sometimes we just gotta go back to basics and we just gotta explain things like how they are done. So let me know in the comments if you have any like all-star makeup tips because I would love that. Give this a like if you liked it, a uh, quick little bell, subscribe, all that stuff, I don't know. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. Okay, love you guys lots.